So I want to do a follow-up video on the Bell slash or X Hestia sort of situation. And the reason why is because there's a lot of interesting comments that I've gotten and I want to discuss about them. And I will say one thing. Again, this comes from a person that just likes making analysis content, that likes to have discussion kind of content. Do not take my opinions as some personal insult upon you. And I know that sounds like I'm going to say something really controversial, but it's not. It's just sometimes when I disagree with people, they will take it as a personal attack. Again, I'm just being very clear, very blunt in my opinions. But I will say, some of the comments that I do get about Darmachi, and this has been going on for years, because I've been covering Darmachi for quite a long time, and a lot longer than people realize on this channel, because I used to cover it on my main channel, and all those videos got migrated over to this channel. So I've been covering Darmachi for, like, five, six years as far as the series goes. And one of the things that I've learned as a reader of the light novels and as I watch the anime, a lot of people create headcanons. Because one of the things that I see a lot is, oh, but Zeus is Belle's grandfather. It's n yes and no. It's adoptive. He's not blood related. Because I keep seeing people being like, oh, but the gods and the goddesses can have children because Zeus is Belle's grand grandfather and so that means he actually has had children it's like no adoptive zeus just adopted bell because bell had no family because his family's dead at least from that part of the story now again there might be other stuff in the games and stuff and i want to be very clear there i don't play the mobile games i i know that there's a lot of story in that that's missing i try to keep up with a lot of that stuff but at the same time i don't like having to consume other forms of media to get nuggets of information but based on my understanding Bell's family by mother and father are passed away so he has no like direct family so Zeus stepped in as his grandfather so that's why Zeus is seen as a grandfather figure to Bell because well Bell didn't know otherwise Bell doesn't even know that his grandfather that he thinks is is Zeus so, to, just to be very clear there, there's no thing there. I did also see another comment. I'm not sure how true this is, but they said that it is mentioned in Season 2, Episode 11, that the gods and goddesses cannot have children. That would make sense. I've seen some people say, oh, but in the Greek mythology, in the real world. I'm like, again, the Greek mythology is not a one-to-one -one from real world to anime. So, I just want to be very clear there, because I do see some people kind of pushing that as like, oh... It's, it's all canon. It's like, no. It's inspiration, but not complete canon. So, I just want to be very clear there. And I did see one comment that I really wanted to talk about, because I was kind of a little bit... There was, there was a couple of things I wanted to talk about. So, it goes like this. Something to remember is that the characters don't know they are in the story, so for Hestia to assume he will get it over his crush is at least logical and trying to flirt with someone who is neither in a relationship nor confessed his feelings is fair game in my opinion she is possessive but not really controlling she could have forbidden to forbidden to date eyes or sit see her from the beginning with her position as his goddess well actually Yes, Hestia has actually done that. She's forbid others to try and have any physical contact with Belle. That's in season two. And any romantic flirting with him. So yes, she has done that. She is possessive and controlling. So I find that comment where you're saying, yeah, she's possessive, but she's not really controlling. No, she's both. This is my entire point for my last video. She can, tries to control a lot of aspects of Belle's romantic life. She has constantly tried to interfere between Belle and Eyes and to say, oh, well, Belle hasn't confessed. Yeah, it doesn't make it easy for Belle to confess his feelings when Hesty is constantly there trying to roadblock it. That is literally the running gag of the series, is that Hestia is always there to block any advancement from any other girl. Now, oh, but they allow him to go on a date with Sia. Yeah, that wasn't really his choice, and it wasn't theirs either, well, Hestia's either. He had to go on that date. So you've already not understood the entire point of the, the season of the anime. He didn't have a choice in the matter. If he rejected her, he would have been attacked by his familiar. And they knew that because that was the whole point. It was like, you're going on a date with me. If you reject it, you're in trouble. That 
And the light novels probably did a better job at portraying that kind of situation because in the light novels, yeah, it was pretty much you do this or you die, Val, kind of situation. And I'm kind of paraphrasing a bit there, but it was one of those where he didn't have a choice in that date. Now, if Belle wanted to go out and ask Eyes on a... or if Eyes asked Belle on a date and it was just a Belle could reject or not, Hestia would f try and do something to stop that. She wouldn't directly say to him, no, you can't accept that because that would upset Belle and she knows that, but she would try and do something to interfere. That is the kind of character Hestia is. Now, the next part says, the problem is not what Hestia is doing, but only on two decisions made by the author from the beginning. Well, I've said multiple times that the author has kind of an identity crisis, but also the first part of that is saying that, well, Hestia can stop Belle from trying to pursue his relationship because she sees it as a crush. That's the most possessive thing that I've ever seen. That's like the real world equivalent of a guy going out, asking a girl out on a date, and the girl going, sorry, I'm not interested in you, I like someone else, and them saying, well, I won't accept that because that's just a crush. You you should accept my feelings because you haven't pursued them. That's the most possessive and creepy thing that I've ever seen. And I'm not trying to insult you because I'm sure you might watch this video, but how you framed that comment is extremely concerning. That is just very parasocial behavior where you're seeing that as Hestia has a right to possess Bell as an object and stop anyone from being able to have any form of interaction with him romantically or even females interacting with him because Hestia multiple times has stopped females just normally interacting with him so I'm sorry but that is just kind of you're concerning me with that comment and I, I, I would either maybe think about how you've worded that or yeah, take a step back and realize that that is a very, very concerning way of wording things. Because you're basically defending someone trying to possess another person. That's not healthy. And Hestia does do that in many cases. And she's been called out in it, in the story. The supporter has called her out on her bad shenanigans. Which is good that the story is somewhat self-aware of Hestia's possessive nature. And again, their feelings are very weird and different because they see love very differently because of the mortal plane of it. Bell is just not interested in that because he sees them as exactly what they are, gods and goddesses. They are a plane above them and their lives are very different. Now, as they've said, and I re-watched parts of it just to kind of get some of the monologuing that the gods have about this kind of stuff, it's a fleeting moment for them. It's a very short moment of love for them. It can be something, like they said, a very motherly, fatherly kind of thing. It can be something, just a very little bit of a crush, or it can be genuine love. I mean, Freya is definitely one of those where she really can feel love and desires. And you'll learn more about that as time goes on. But Hestia's, in my opinion, is very motherly, but a little bit too possessive. And yeah, I understand that she is the virgin goddess, you know, she can still do it, blah, blah, blah. But the reality is, is that doesn't give her the right to try and control every aspect of Belle's life and deny him the ability to actually pursue a relationship that he desires because, oh, it might be a crush. Well, clearly it's not a, just a normal little crush. He's been trying to pursue eyes for ages. And this whole idea of, oh, well, he hasn't actually confessed. Yeah, but Hestia also knows that Belle is very wishy-washy. Belle has always been wishy-washy. Hestia knows this. Hestia, if anything, should be supporting his desires. Supporting him. If anything, it would work out better for Hestia if she believed it was just going to be a fleeting crush that both of them would end up breaking up. Because at that point, okay, Belle, go off, do your confession, go out on your dates, and then break up a couple of weeks later, if that's how she was going to see it, or months. But Hestia knows that they that Bell really desires her. Bell wants to stand side by side. Now I've seen some people say and ask questions about the whole desire that Bell wants and being like, oh well you know he could be with her now. But the thing is is that he wants to be on an equal footing as an adventurer because he sees that as like the end game. He he sees eyes as too far above her because of her level. She's powerful, she's popular, she's beloved, she's a hero to some people. Bell wants to be on equal footings of that before he can confess his feelings. And that's his journey of trying to get to that point. And one other comment that I did see, and I thought it was a really good comment, 
was them bringing up the fact that the author is not very good at developing more than one girl at the same time and kind of sidelines them. And I have actually used this phrase before, and I call it the cheerleader squad sy syndrome. It's something that Sword Art Online, or SAO, has a problem with, where the writer openly admits that they couldn't develop multiple girls at a time. So they introduce a girl, they build them up, they give them a bit of backstory, they do the little confession, they, they do the little, ooh, I love you kind of thing, and then they get sidelined, and then they join the cheerleader squad. That is very much very similar to Darmachi. You get a girl, they confess their feelings, they can't either get rejected or just kind of get sidelined. Generally, it can be both, but generally they won't get a, they won't get an answer or they get sidelined. Look at the supporter, and then they join the cheerleader squad, and then they really get no development or little development at all throughout the story. That in itself is very annoying, and that's why I said that at this point, I just kind of wish the author would pick a lane and stick to it, rather than being a little bit wishy-washy about them either pursuing a harem or going down the eyes route. That's why I just wish more development went towards eyes throughout the story. But, as that commenter pointed out, and it's very true, that the writer isn't very good at developing multiple characters all at the same time. And that's probably why a lot of these characters only get their little moment of shine and eyes just kind of has been sitting in the back burner and i feel like yeah eyes will get most of her development when the story is getting to its conclusion or the writer decides that it really needs to be badly developed i understand why some people want hestia to win but that i think is also from an animes only perspective because as a lot of us joke about the studio jc staff constantly prop hestia up in the anime and make her seem like the main love interest when she never was. And another great point that someone said is that you know that Hes uh, Eyes is the main love interest when she has an entire side story volume series dedicated towards it. But even then, some of the side characters do get a lot of attention and Eyes sometimes gets sidelined. But that story is mainly about Eyes and her familiar members. So yeah, she is a main character. It's just she doesn't always get the center stage in the story. But... For those that are watching season 5, you will understand Belle and Isa's connection soon enough. Again, don't take anything too personal. It's just my ramblings and my thoughts as far as the series goes. And just how I feel about where the story is going. I love Darmachi as a series. I love reading it. I look forward to the future volumes. But my main frustration is I just want Eyes to get some more development. Because it's either go down the harem route and stop like playing around with the concept or stick to the lane with eyes and build her out more it's fine to have other girls being developed but what frustrates me is exactly what i mentioned too much has been developed everywhere else and not enough is being developed in the main love interest and so it's creating an identity crisis where exactly what is happening is happening right now my comment section is full of people thinking that hesty is the main love interest when she's not and at the end of this season, people are going to think Sierra is, and Sam Freya is. It's like, hmm, wonder why I, I kind of point these things out. It's that whole ship analogy. I'm not going to say it again. So again, love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you like this video, hit the like, subscribe, and I'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video.